this is interesting because I never expected to live this long. Now, I'm sure you probably thought the same thing, or you're thinking the same thing if you're Generation XYZ or the Millennials. You see, advertising has come up with a lot of cute names in order to frame the generations that are existing at a certain time frame. Usually, it's used to be probably about 40 years apart. Now, the Bible has an interesting way of looking at generations, and different people have different perspectives on it. Generally, whenever there was a judgment that was to come upon a generation, because of the book of Exodus, and the first time that things are listed in the Bible, we call that a, a uh, the theory of exegetical constancy, where the first time you see something, it's going to continue that way all the way through the scriptures, because it is what it was, what it is, and what it shall be. At least that's the way I say it in integral specificity. In systematic theology, they call it exegetical constancy. And it's a dogma and a doctrine. Now, I'll admit, not everyone goes to that level of theology. You know, you know, it's just the way it is. You know, Bible schools are Bible schools. And schools of the Bible are schools of the Bible. And you study on your own or you learn on your own. For millennials, I'd like to talk to the millennial generation. Because I can talk to the older generations. And they're always, you know, got this wild idea about how they want to communicate. You know, they want to King Jameth it, or they want to King Jameth it only it, or they want to reduce it down to, you know, hey, let's wrap it, jap it, slap it, you know, and kind of make it, break it, you know, and fake it, you know, until we make it kind of routine to where we get these people in, deceive them, reality check comes in, some of them stay with it, some of them don't stay with it, some of them stone you, some of them leave you, and some of them don't follow you but they wind up not getting an accurate picture of really what the gospel is or what Jesus said. Because you see, I'm interested in the gospel in one way. I'd like to see people saved. But I'm more interested in what Jesus said because the fact of the matter is, God can save a person no matter what. Whether I choose to call it the gospel or whether I choose to say God saved them, that's a theological predicate when people are arguing and debating things. The guy that wants to be saved doesn't care what you call it. As a matter of fact, he just wants to be rescued. And that's what I'm going to call this. Let's call this the Millennial Rescue Package. We'll call it that because everyone needs a package at some point in time. You know, you like to get it from UPS or from FedEx, but you don't want to get it from, you know, snail mail because guess what? It takes so long to go through the U.S. Post Office, you're not sure you're going to get it. So, you know, you either you up it's or you get it's, it's, you know, and we like to kind of use those terminologies because we know what we're talking about. And that's why with the millennials, you know, I'm a baby boomer. You know, I was like kind of like the afterthought, not the forethought, so that I just kind of came along, you know, when, you know, my parents just decided, you know, unfortunately my parents didn't decide, they just kind of like discovered that I was there and wow, were they shocked. And so I was a baby boomer. I'm part of that baby boomer generation. I was a hippie at one time and, you know, I intellectual, and I knew a lot of things, and discovered a lot of things, and learned a lot of things. But for the millennial, you guys have something different that I didn't have, that I am so jealous of, that I'm so thrilled to have now, that I'm like, wow, I'm like thrilled. It's like I'm not doing the valley routine, you know, I'm not watching it on TV, but check it out, dude. You know, you got thumbings. You know, you can thumb theology. Yeah, you can literally have a thumbnail theology, and you can get a degree just by thumbing it, texting. You literally can learn from your texting capabilities on your phone. You have smartphones to make you smart because you can't keep track of what it is that you're doing at the time that you're doing it because most of the time if you're texting, you don't know what you're doing anyways. You're just busy trying to get the letters in. And so you're moving around really fast and you don't know what you're saying and you don't think it through sometimes. And so you know it and I know it because we see it on the internet all the time. You know, people getting sued or busted or whatever because they grabbed their phone and they went ahead and took a picture of that or they videoed this or they didn't think it through and they realized, oh no, everybody knows now and they've seen it. Well, millennial, you know that, you know, going viral is something that's fun at some point in time, but if it was embarrassing for you and it wasn't something that you wanted anyone to see, going viral might not have been the way to go. Now, I'm going to tell you something that I wish would go viral, and that's kind of like the recovery package, you know, for millennials. 
The recovery package is the idea that God wants you to recover from something that's going to kill you. Literally. God wants you to be brought to a place of what we call salvation. Because, quite frankly, there's so many things going on in the world, you can't keep track of everything that's going to happen. I mean, if someone came up to you and said, you've been poisoned by the water, you'd go, oh no, I got cancer, I'm dying. You know, and then you text it, you know, and you try to find out what's going on. You would Google it or Bing it. No offense, but I'm not much on the Bing routine, you know, because I think it's like a Bing Bong or a Ping Bong, you know, and I'm just not there. So I'll just say Google it, but you know, you do a search engine, you know, you check it out, you look out, you know, you try to find out what it is all about. And that's what I'm going to tell you, Millennial, is that in this gospel that we're talking about, this recovery package, this restoration, this idea of God wanting to bring to you something that you don't have, you need to check it out to Google. I mean, really, because you're not going to go to church. Let's be honest with you. You know, I mean, you know, you, you might get conned into it once in a while, or you might make it to a concert or two, you know, and, you know, you kind of played with the game, you know, you've heard it on television, you maybe have seen some of it, but you tuned it out, you tuned it out. You just don't have the same ear that you once had, you know, God is far away and he's not here. And somehow you've gotten away from ever hearing with the iPad now, with the iPod now, with the buds in your ears that you don't need to have or see or feel or touch or know that there is a God. So I'm going to give you kind of like a word for what you've heard before. You know, from your parents, you know, from your grandparents, you know, from the people that are praying for you. God wants you to Google it. Yeah, yeah I'm so, hey, serious biz, dude. You know, I mean, check it out. You don't believe me? Ask him. <laughs> you ain't going to do that now, are you? <laughs> but seriously, you're a millennial. Google it. You know how. Man, just pull up the app and check it. You know, you got apps for everything. Man, I've seen you in churches. You know, some of you guys. I mean, you know, the rest of you, I don't know what you're doing with your apps, you know. You're probably a pornographer, which is, you know, okay, fine. You know, you're, you're a millennial, so you probably are. They say that 85% of you are into pornography, you know, or have been participating in, or don't look at it as pornography, you just look at it as sexting, texting, or, you know, somehow sending some, hey, you know, I'm just looking provocative pictures, you know, over the internet. I got news for you. God already has dealt with those issues. It's not about the internet and pornography. Who cares? When Jesus was alive on the earth, slaves were topless. Oh my God! Yeah, seriously. Roman culture didn't treat slaves with any respect, and so lots of times one of the things that they did was kind of like all those shows, you know, that you shouldn't be watching on television, that probably you're watching on television, that shouldn't be portraying what they're portraying, and you're watching it, and you know it, and you got it, and so guess what? Shouldn't be doing it, but Jesus knew it. Jesus dealt with the culture of the time. I mean, you yourself, as a millennial, probably have been faced with the issue of, well, you know, am I doing some designer drugs? You know, I mean, we don't call them designer drugs nowadays, do we? It's like coke and smoke and toke and do this and do that. You know, we got our e-cigarettes or we got our e-pot, you know. We got our i this and i that, you know. And kind of like doing the scene, you know, with the routine, you know, and trying out new things in order to get high, to get on, to get with it, to keep going, to be, you know, like we used to say to our parents, you know, Oh, yeah, you're a caffeine addict. Oh, yeah, you're an alcohol addict. Well, now you know as well as I do. Look around. They're energy drink addicts, and they're addicts. You can tell because they come down and they crash down. Or they're hyped up, and you can tell they're hyped up. They're wound up. Matter of fact, you look like me, and you think that maybe I'm, like, on energy drinks. Seven up, dude. Hey, I'm an upper. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> I drink Pepsi, but right now I just needed to kind of lay off the caffeine for a minute, you know, and kind of do some sevens, you know. But truthfully telling you, Millennial, what you can do is what you ought to do. You ought to Google the Gospel. You ought to Google God. You ought to Google Jesus and learn from that. I know that you probably are and have been involved in either pole dancing or pornography or sexting or some type of irregardless, irresponsible, or irregardless, regardless, irresponsible behaviors that you don't tell anyone about, 
nobody knows about, and God knows, everyone knows that some of those, you know, Christians that are saved today, hey, they knew exactly what you're going through, and they did the same thing in their day. Trust me, they did. They may not admit always everything that they did, but they've done it, you know, and they're kind of like, you know, dealing with it. And the saddest part is when they can't admit it, you know, the truth about everyone's done. Everyone's a sinner. Jesus dealt with it in his day. It wasn't some big shock. People were doing drugs back in Aristotle. They were doing drugs back in Flavius Josephus. They were doing it back when Philo was writing about it from from uh, Egypt, you know, from I'm trying to think of what was it called. Uh, if you ever want to know about Jewish history, read Philo. Don't read Josephus. Josephus was, you know, Johnny come lately that worked for the Romans. But uh, the acceptable Jewish history was from Philo. And you could just look up Philo. Text Philo and you'll find out all things about Jewish culture. But my point is this. If you want to learn about Jesus, Google it. Because, you know, I mean, I could tell you and sit here something and tell you stuff that, you know, pastors want to tell you. And they're going to probably get mad at me for telling you this. But, hey, you know, you're not going to sit down and read the Bible. We know that. You know, we've kind of gotten a handle on it. Unless you're in church, you're not going to read it. You're not going to listen to it. You're not going to do it. You're too busy. Hey, I don't. I get it. You know, I when, quite frankly, when uh, Droid came out, you know, I was one of the first ones on it. Couldn't afford the, you know, I this, I that, and everything. But I can recommend it, and I still tell everyone, hey man, use it. iPad, you know, use the iPhone, use all of it. Make use of the technology. Don't just abuse the technology, but make use of it too. Because gradually you're going to find that there's a conflict going on, you know, that somewhere in the world you're going to discover that you're part of that conflict, that your generation has come to a realization that this isn't the answer, that Christians aren't really giving me the full scope score or the full story because, you know, on the one hand, they tell me, you know, God's got a plan for my life. On the other hand, they tell me to give up this part of my life and then give up that part of my life and this is the only part of my life that I got and I don't know what to do. Well, I, I got news for you. God does. Forget the Christians. Forget the church. Forget anything. Talk to God. Hey, millennial, you know, if you ain't in it, then you ain't of it and you ain't with it. So get what? Get with it. Get with, you know who? Yeah, you can call him the man upstairs, you can call him the higher power if you want to. But you know what? Jesus said he was your father. He said you have a father that isn't like anybody here on earth. Thank God. I don't know about you. Now, I, you know, I want to level with you for a minute. You know, hey, millennial, I get you. You probably don't have much of a father. Mine wasn't so good, you know. My father literally was a one-night stand on the back of a... Norton front end, you know, that was part of a motorcycle gang called the Outlaws. And in that heyday, back in Oakland, the Outlaws were the number one fighting gang with the Hell Angels. And guess who, you know, Stoney was one of the Outlaws who was, you know, like, always out, you know, doing some numbers with the Hell's Angels, you know, because they were killing each other in those days and getting away with it. In those days, back in the 50s, you know, it was kind of like, Whoa! You know, everybody was trying this new thing coming out of this conservative thing to get into this wild thing, you know, which you know and have seen some movies about, you know, from the old days. But my dad wasn't much of a dad, you know. As a matter of fact, what happened was that my mother jumped on his bike down in L.A., rode it up to Oakland, probably had a wild fling on the way, and then guess what? He beat the snot out of her. She got abused, confused, and lost it, you know, so she headed back. She split from him and ran like for her life, you know, ran for her life because he literally was like, you know, Pacific League champion in the Navy, was able to, you know, literally beat the crap out of her and almost killed her. So she got back, you know, she was hiding out down in L.A. And guess what? Whoa! Eight months later, guess who's prego? And guess who comes showing up knocking on the door down there, you know? Suddenly, I got an old man that's wandering around that, you know, he's kind of looking for, you know, figures it out or somehow finds out that, you know, he's got a... He's got a little kitty whopper, you know, or a little child whopper, or a little tadpole, you know, kind of swim along, you know. It's kind of like, whoa, who is this? Me. Hey. I was an afterthought. Matter of fact, I was what in Jewish culture is called a manzer. I was a bastard. Literally. Seriously. No, not because I am today, but, but because I was born out of wedlock. I was a one-night stand. I mean, come on now. My mother wasn't going to marry the guy. And she wasn't saved, you know. She was kind of like, you know, way out to lunch. You know, she had, like... 
been independent for quite a while, and she was a truck stop waitress, you know, and so, hey, you know, she was sassy, brassy, and, you know, kind of not so classy. So, my point being is this. I know what it's like to not be on the right side of the tracks. I know what it's like to be on the wrong side of the tracks. I know what it's like to be in sin, out of sin, with sin, through sin, and be away from sin. But I also know what it's like to know Jesus. I also know what it's like to have a real Father who is in heaven. See, my father, finally, you know, when he disappeared, literally kind of disappeared, you know, from the scene. You know, thank God, you know, we, they kept me away from him. And I never, when I looked him up, trying to find out stuff about him later, couldn't find him anywhere. Still can't, you know, praise the Lord. Thank God. Mm -hmm. Ooh, thank you, Lord. You know, but that being said, you know, he was a violent man. You know, I was lived by violence, which I don't, you know. And he was German, you know, and he was Jewish, you know, he had a lot of issues, you know. But the point being is this. God knows you. God, when you Google him, will talk to you. Now, I know that sounds a little weird, you know, it's a little like fishy, you know, you, I'd rather you read the Bible, but, you know, since you aren't going to read the Bible, you Google God, and you, you read something there that'll go, huh, you know, it'll make you think. Then one of the words in there, you know, like if you start finding out about, like, either Trinity or, you know, God the Father, you know, Google that. Google God the Father and see what that has to say. Google Jesus and see what that has to say. Google Gospel and find out what that has to say. You see, I would rather that you find out a little bit and run with it than to try to give you a big picture and try to tell you, yes, it's a fact that you were a sinner. Yes, God died for you. Yes, there's atonement. Yes, there's redemption. Yes, 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 no. Because I know what you're going to say. No way. Same thing I did. You know, like I went to a concert, man. You know, I was checking out the music. I saw people that glowed. I mean, they literally glowed. I mean, my wife was shocked the first time I was asked to speak in front of a church. You know, it was that, uh, it was, it was kind of unique, you know, my, my wife, Lori, you know, I've been married before, you know, my wife's divorced me. <laughs> uh, you know, what can I say? You know, they just didn't stick around. One was dead, you know, died, you know, it's got to do with the Lord. The other one is like, wow, still crying for her, you know, because she got saved, you know, and just don't know what the heck is going on with her, but, you know, praise the Lord, you know, but I was laying in a hospital bed dying of, you know, Crohn's disease, she divorced me, you know, and she served me papers, and, you know, even the the server at the time felt so sorry for me because, you know, I was on my deathbed, you know, and he just said, oh my God, I'm so sorry, you know, and he served me, and I was like sitting there, you know, going, well, I don't know, what do I do, Christian don't divorce. Christians don't get into this trouble. Oh, God! No, I didn't do that. Of course not. I knew Jesus. <laughs> I went, okay, you know, wow. You know, praise the Lord, you know. Anyway, so my big issue is free. So, my wife, Lori, who I've been married to for, oh, I don't know, I think eight or nine years, she had never seen me, you know, give testimony or speak in front of the church or teach, because now I've been doing video ministry for, oh, I don't know, about seven years or so. Before, I just used to write on the internet. You know, I didn't do recordings. So she never seen me speak in front of a church or speak to believers or speak to Christians, you know, in general. And this church I had been working on, you know, she had come to help me in, um, in the ministry, you know, and we were doing this missionary outreach, you know, and she had been with me you know, for quite a while. We've been married for, you know, quite a few years, and she, you know, knew me as a Christian, and she she had been saved for, oh, I don't know, about three or four years, maybe, maybe four years or something, something like that. So anyways, the point being is that I was getting up to speak. She, uh, said, I, and she just couldn't talk. She says, I've never seen you like that. And I went, like what? You know, because it was, it was, it was, it'd been a long time since I spoke in front of a church, and I had a chance to share my testimony, and, huh, well, <laughs> you know, I'd been working in the ministry behind the scenes for so long, doing everybody else's ministry work, you know, and everything else. God made me share my testimony, and made me you know, share basically Proverbs 3, 5, 6 to this congregation of, they were technically kind of Pentecostal kind of type people, you know. Um, they were getting ready to go on a mission to Japan and some other countries, you know, and they were getting ready to do um, some teaching of, of leaders. And so, you know, they asked me to come to church, you know, and to speak. And, uh, you know, I was going to say no, and God stopped my jaw, you know, because I was in their church at the time getting ready to, you know, tell them no if I answered the phone, you know, and said, well, I shared my testimony, you know, and um, 
it was it was rather long, <laughs> and nobody left. You know, they all stayed, and I kept talking. You know, and I kept saying, "Well, if you, you know, if you want me to shut up, I'll stop talking." You know, and I kept sharing with them. And, you know, we talked about the fatherhood of God. We talked about Jesus. We talked about quite a few of the miracles that have been in my life. You see, one of the things that sometimes Christians forget is that signs and wonders will accompany those who believe. And I've had my, more than my fair share of signs and wonders. You know, it's like, okay, you know, and it's not just, oh, only the sign of Jonah will be given, you know, Jesus died and rose and free. Uh, well, you know, there's some of us that were in the Jesus movement that, you know, it still happens today, you know, because it still happens in my life every day. Now, that's what I'm trying to tell you, literally, millennial, is that there's still things going on you don't know about that maybe you've gone to the wrong church to find out about. Maybe you've gone to the wrong place to learn about. Maybe you've heard it from some other place and you don't know what about all the things that Jesus said would be about those who love him. Now, for me, when I went to that concert, everybody glowed and they had this joy and this peace and this just aura. And my wife saw that when I shared Jesus with um, the people there, and I, I just kind of became, um, I guess you'd say like when Jesus went on the Mount of Transfiguration and he was transformed before them, and then he was in his glory. Well, the glory of the Lord that comes upon you at times is such that the Holy Spirit will fill you and make you a light, literally. You'll glow in the dark. I mean, literally, you really will. <laughs> you don't think so? <laughs> you watch. I might record it sometime. But my point is this, Millennial. Check it out. I did. I went and saw these people. I said, I want what they got. I, I, I don't know about this gospel junk, because Greg Laurie was teaching, and you know, he's kind of like in his early days. You know, it's kind of like, well, he's kind of like telling me the story about Jonah and writing it on a sketch pad, which is kind of cool when we had hair back then. He's kind of like a young kid, you know. And he's a hippie, you know, so I liked it, you know, and I have long hair. But it was different, you know. I mean, it was like, you know, he, he, had, he didn't say things like he does now, you know, which is like, oh, you know, I'm glad, you know, I'm you feel the pressure, you feel the, oh, no. <laughs> you probably aren't going to get there if you're listening to this video, you know, and if you're listening to this millennial perspective of millennial gospel, you're probably not going to go to one of those situations. You're going to avoid the situation, you know. You're not going to be like a Jersey guy, you know, and get on it, you know. And you're going to be from Boston, you know. You're, gonna, you're kind of like gonna, not going to go to the coast, you know. You're going to stay away from those things. Well, if you're dodging the situation, you know, then check it out on your own. You know, take the initiation, you know, and just go ahead and text it, man. You know, I mean, just do the duty, you know, and Google it. Google the gospel, Google Jesus, Google if you want to, miracles or whatever. You know, kind of be curious, ask. You see, that's the one thing that you don't get enough told about Jesus, is he said, ask. That's all he said. He didn't say to the people, look, follow me, man, you know, just have faith. Just have faith. I'm telling you, you have faith, and man, I'll tell you it's going on. You know, he said, if you did have faith, the size of mustard seed, if you say it's bound to be gone, it'd be gone, man, no problem. But he says, I'm not telling you to have faith. I'm telling you to ask, and it shall be given unto you. Seek, and you shall find. Oh, knock. Yeah, the door will be open. You know, knock, I'll open the door for you. You know, you can come on in, talk to me. Because, you see, that's what God wants you to do. He doesn't want you to go blindly into some church and say, oh, i got to come to church in order to get saved. No. He says, call. Just give me a call. Hey, I can tell you a miracle about God talking to me on the phone that would blow your mind. You come to my house and I talk to you. you know, Or you know, maybe you know, send me a video or send me an email. I'll tell you about the story of God speaking on the telephone. That blew my mind. And it still blows minds of people today. Because God does speak, and he'll use any means and any availability, even a jackass, which we know is a donkey. So I can say jackass, you know, because there are a lot of people running around that act like donkeys, you know, and we know what they are. But my point is this, you need to figure it out in order to know about what you're doing about that reality that's coming upon you. You can look around and see, you've heard the stories about rapture, this and that and the other thing, and you, you know, you heard the stories about end of the world, you know, and Armageddon and all that junk. You know the words. Google it. Google it. Each one. One by one. Look at the variety of posts. Look at the variety of articles. Read all of them. Check them out. 
you're going to find your way. You may not find exactly what it is that God is speaking to you immediately. But you know, Jesus made it simpler than Googling, and he made it simpler than going to church, and he made it simpler than going to you know some revival meeting, and he made it simpler than going to some television program or some televised you know media thing or some way of having someone bug you. He made it a lot easier. He said, call. That's it. When he was dying on a cross, he made it even easier. He said, hey, Jesus. Jesus was like, what? Can't you see how busy? He says, remember me when I'm in your kingdom. Yeah. Okay, come on, let's go. I mean, that's paraphrasing quite a bit, but that is what happened. He said, you'll be with me in paradise. I, I'm taking you with me. Come on, we're going. Yeah, we're dying, but we're going. And then he rose from the dead, which means, guess where the thief went? The thief? Yeah, he was a thief. He's a murderer. You know, I mean, he was kind of like, you know, guilty. Just like you. You know, you're probably, you know, done some time on doing something you shouldn't have been doing. And you know what it is, and I don't. And I don't really care. God doesn't either. You know it. You frankly understand it very well. You know to look up and to Google sin. You know to look up and Google redemption or whatever you want to look up those words. You want to look up these spiritual terms? Look them up. Because I know you don't understand what it means. You don't know what grace is. You don't know what giving something to you by way of it costing so much you can't possibly pay for it. And it's being given to you if you'll just do one thing. Ask. Call. Seek. Find. Millennial. You only got to Google. It's not that hard. It doesn't take a genius to figure out that you can do that, you know on your iPad and swipe it and go look at it. You can even look at pictures of Jesus, you know, figure them out. You like blonde hair, blue eyes? Take one. You know, you like curly hair, you know, and wearing a silly looking talis katan or a talis, you know, and pretending to be orthodox, which he wasn't. Check that out. You think that he was a rabbi? He wasn't. I'm sorry, he was not a rabbi. Jesus was a man. Jesus was the carpenter's son. He couldn't have been a rabbi. No offense, but people that tell you he was a rabbi, they don't know Jewish law. You know I mean, it's like, no, nah, he wasn't Levitical. Sorry. He wasn't of the tribe of Levi. He wasn't Aaronic. He was Melchizedek. You see, he was a priest after the order of Melchizedek, which is different than the Aaronic priesthood. That's why he's not a rabbi. The reason he's not a rabbi, they called him rabbi because he taught. He was different than everyone else. They literally fulfilled the word of God by the scripture prophecy saying, we shall all be taught of God by God. That's what Jesus was. God in the flesh. God incarnate. That's why God can come walking in any moment now, right now, and sit down at this chair. God could come and talk to you on Google when you Google it. God could speak to you from the heavens, and you could say to him, literally, like I did at one point in time, I don't know you, or I don't understand this, and I don't like it, and I want to know, and I want you to do something about it, and it ain't working, and this isn't right, and I'm going to pull a good Cosby routine with Noah, and this isn't right, and I don't understand what you're doing, God, 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 man, he's making it rain, and making it, you know, what's going on? Be real. You got an issue with God? Tell him. You got an issue with the church? Do it. Google it. Find out why. You can't have that personal relationship with God that you want. You can know God in a personal and intimate way, in a real way that Jesus said that has nothing to do with the religious atmosphere that you think that you've got to be a part of. Matter of fact, I would tell you this. Check them out. You go to all of them. I don't care if you start today and you work your way through A to Z on churches or A to Z on religions. Check them out. I'm not stopping you. Nobody is. Because you don't have the guts to do it. I did. Matter of fact, I checked a lot of them out after I got saved. <laughs> you know. Okay, Lord, you know, I want to know why they want to know this. Why do they want to do that? Why do they want you know, I got involved in everything. <laughs> well, after I was saved. Woohoo! So, yeah, I know a lot more than I talk about. Oftentimes. And a lot, I know a lot more than I tell about. Oftentimes. Because most of the time, I'm just trying to talk to you. You know, trying to have a conversation here. We're trying to relate to each other. You know, trying to get you to realize, hey, it's not about me. 
And it's not about the church, and it's not about the pastor, and it's not about this religion over here, or that doctrine over there, or that dogma down there, or that 17 different ways of trying to give you the gospel, which everybody's got some different version of. Whew. The Roman road, the, you know, whatever. Ask. That's all you got to do. Jesus said, come unto me. At the end of the Bible itself, the last words that are really spoken to everyone and to anyone and to everyone and anyone at any time and every place is come. That's it. That's all. That's simple. I would tell you this. How dare you do it? You know, I mean, I, I've done it before, you know, and I've told people this, and I'll tell you this one, contrary to pastors, you know, because they don't like me telling you this. You know, and I'm, I'm not a pastor, by the way, you know, in case you're wondering. No, no, I don't like titles. Don't give me a title. Sorry, you know, Jesus didn't have any titles. I don't need no titles. Gentiles, lordship, people that want to exercise some kind of authority over one another, you know, they need titles. You know, they need to be called themselves apostles and pastors and prophets and teachers and elders and deacons and reekers and reekers and reekers and reachers and whatever they are, you know, in order to assimilate that type of mantle, you know, that they've been given. So they can do their duty, you know, when it comes to the responsibility that they've been given and accountability within the denomination, within the realization of the evangelicalisms that they might be involved in or the denominationalism that they might be a part of. So in Christendom, yeah, there's lots of people that have titles, you know. Hey, Google it. You know, I don't think the disciples had titles. I don't think the apostles were called apostles necessarily at first, although they were communicated in the book of Acts as apostles, you know, because they saw the Lord, you know, and then they had to make up criteria for who was an apostle, because then they argued about who was, who wasn't, who wasn't. I don't think Jesus said, hey, Apostle Peter, could you come here? Apostle John, could you come here? I don't think so. I'm sorry. But he did chose 12 to be his disciples, you know. And there's a little difference in Jewish culture about what a disciple is than what Christianity sometimes teaches in Christendom, you know. It's kind of like, Somebody come live with you. You know, somebody gives up, sells all they have to come live with you. Notice that Book of Acts. You know, it's like, well, some people say they don't do that. Well, we did in the Jesus movement. Um, not everyone, no. Greg might not have. You know, but there were other churches. You know, I mean, the Calvary said, you know, Chuck started a few houses that you know they sold everything and they got together. You know, they had you know halfway houses and stuff. You know, so I don't know what to admit to sometimes to people because I lived it. So my point is this. Google it. There's lots of people saying lots of things about things that they thought they know, they think they know, and they don't know. Or they do know, or they know only in part. Because everybody has a little piece. You know, and everybody puts the pieces together and they kind of learn on their own. We're told that we're supposed to do that. We're supposed to have all the little pieces so that God could take the pieces and put them together in the puzzle he wants you to see. Wants you to understand, wants you to know. Because you're a millennial. You have more available knowledge at your fingertips. Okay, forget the fingers. At your thumb than anyone else I know. And why would you be dumb if you got a thumb? Come on now. Don't be dumb. You got a thumb. You're millennial. Thumb it. That's the gospel. That's what I'm telling you to do. Thumb it, dude. Check it out. Go to Google. I mean, come on now. You know, what are you, what are you wasting time for? You could check it out, get real, find out. Decide for yourself, hey, you know what, I don't, they're only asking me to call upon the name of the Lord, you know, I mean, if God answers, great, what am I going to do? You know, is he going to like, you know, like, blast me or pass me or, you know, like, convert me into some kind of weirdo, you know, some kind of theological kind of messed up thing? Or is he going to minister to me in some way? Is he going to come to me where I'm at, answer my questions, sit down and have a talk with me so that I could maybe even talk text to him, you know, and find out, hey, are you really, you know, the God of the universe? Is Jesus your son? Is there a way of salvation for me? Is there a place in your kingdom? Do I have salvation? What do I got to do to be saved? What is this gospel? What is sanctification? What is, you know, all the other words you could put in there? And Google it! Thumb it, dude. I'm serious. And if you got a thumb, you know what to do. If you got fingers, you know how to type. If you know what to do with swipe, you know, you can go ahead and use your iPad and do the same thing. Yeah, you can click on a video, you know, and watch, you know, like you're doing right now with me, you know, or you can put some other video, you know, and go viral on it. But you need to do something about it, millennial. You need to be the type of millennial that you should be. 
because you've got more knowledge and availability because of the internet than any other generation before you. You got it all. You got the big picture. If you're willing to look at it. Coward. I know you're a coward. You're like the rest of us. You're hiding out in the corner, you know, and you like your little sin, you know, a little pornography here, you know, a little pole dancing here, you know, a little sexual perversion here. And don't think that sexual perversion is outside the church. Oh, it's rampant inside Christendom. Believe me. I mean, every pastor I know will teach all oh, the marriage bans undefiled, you know, blah, 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 blah. But they don't teach about holiness when it comes to sex, because guess what? They're all affected by the sexual revolution from my day. Pervert? And they are. A bunch of perverts out there. Now, God's working on them to change their perversion to conversion so that they could be the reality of the holiness, the completeness, the beauty of what God intended for a man and a woman to be. Because like I said from the beginning, hey, I was an afterthought, man. I was on the back seat of a bike, you know, or at least that's where I was conceived. You know, so, man, I know about, you know, Harleys, and I know about bike riders, you know, and I'm not going there for, you know, when it comes to all the modern day, you know, Christendom evangelism thing, you know, like, you could be an MMA writer, you know, you could be a soldier for Jesus, you know, and go kill somebody, and then, by the way, convert, you know, in the name of Jesus, I'm going to shoot you, jerk, you know. Okay, holy war, yeah, they tried that before. Be careful. Google it. Whatever it is that you don't understand, whatever it is you have no comprehension of, whatever it is when it comes to religious things, when it comes to asking God by His Spirit to do something for you, I'm going to bless you in the name of Jesus and say, according to God's mercy and grace, may He show you by Googling it, His face that you would see him face to face because of what Jesus has done, not because of what's on the internet, what's in Wikipedia, or any other venue whatsoever. I can tell you this, all of my life I have done this one thing with Christians one to one. You come in my house and I'll do it with you. And it scares the living daylights out of me, the few times I've done it. They used to call it shotgun evangelism, you know, in some ways. They used to also call it blast, 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 blast. Bless and blast. Yeah, bless and blast. But basically what it was, was that, and shotgun, you know, Bible or whatever, I don't know. Greg used that word for it too. Uh, everybody says, don't do it. Dude, if it works, do it. I mean, first of all, you know, I'd say read a devotional because I'm going to read this devotional in a minute and tell you that, you know, God was speaking and this is what he's saying to you, you know, and so that way you know it came from some kind of devotional, that way you know it's a video, that way you know it's me, and it's free. But I'll be honest with you, I have told people to do this, and here's something that you could do for yourself. If you want to, if you don't want to thumb it, if you want to have hard copy, woohoo, which I like. You know, and I'm not telling you this is the best way to do it. I'm just telling you, if you're millennial and you know you've been like faking it and breaking it and avoiding church like the plague, you know, you're not doing the mission scene, you know, you're not sleeping under the streets in the gutters, you know, you're not, you know, um, hitting everybody up for a dime and a dollar and a you know money and you know somebody's witnessing to you while you're taking the money so you already heard the gospel i'm telling you millennial if you're really out there and you're just flat out dumb because you don't have a thumb then hey don't be dumb here's a hard copy way also besides thumbing it you know googling it. besides the google besides the google here's another way now you should go to church oh you know let me put a plug in for you know christendom and christianity and evangelists and prophets and teachers and you know all the other guys that are in charge you know and in, their place, God using in the body of Christ to accomplish his purposes, you know, bandage up wounds, you know, heal the sick, raise the dead, you know, kind of watch people speak, you know, feed you, give you some food, and clothing, you know, hopefully, you know, meet you in prison, meet you in the hospital, although I never had any Christians come meet me in the hospital, and I spent years, yeah, years, and I'm from Calvary, Costa Mesa, <laughs> yeah, nobody came saw me, praise the Lord, God used it in a way, in a very miraculous way. Well, we'll talk about that some other day. But my point is this. You should go to church and hear the gospel. You'll hear it. You know that. You should go to a concert and hear the gospel. You should hear it any way you want to hear it. You know, video it. You know, Google it first. Get a knowledge of what's going to happen. You know, that way you know. Then when it's time, you know, if God's doing something, you'll know. You'll know. There's no doubt about it. That's why you can say, come. He can say, come. You'll come. And when it's time, you'll come. We're praying for you. Remember that. I'm on your case. You know, I'm praying for you. Well, here's the point. 
if you want to know God's real, you know, and I told people this, you know, sat down with him in counseling sessions, you know, one on one, so there's nobody around, you know, you know, maybe one or two sometimes, you know, it might be more than once, once in a while. One case there was, you know, husband and wife going to get married, and they didn't get married after that. <laughs> wow, that was shocking. And to this day, the person is on the internet, one of them, and um, still has issues with me that, you know, I'm praying for. God knows I'm still praying for. But, you know, she's listening, but she's not responding. But still, I pray for it. But it was this. You think in your mind, you know, and I'll tell you, this is what I do. I say, look, God can speak to you anywhere where you are, as you are, the way you are. You know, I said, God right now wants to speak to you. He wants to prove to you and demonstrate that he's real, that he's the living God. That he can speak to you by the Holy Spirit. That he can show you something that there's no other way that it will fit in your life. And I don't want to know what it is. Don't tell me what you're thinking. You think in your mind, whatever it is that you want to talk to God or you or you know, you have in your mind that God, you know, you know that God is talking to you. And then the only thing I ask, I don't ask one thing after you read whatever it is you open this Bible to, you tell me if God spoke to you or not. I don't need to know what the scripture is, but you just tell me whether God spoke to you or not. And I'll say, you know, and I'll pray for you, God, you know, speak to my sister, my brother, whatever it may be. You know, hear their cry, meet their plea. Have mercy on them, forgive them, cleanse them, move with them, Holy Spirit, show them. They'd flip open the Bible, you know, and they'd read someplace, you know. And God knows if he answers right now, I'm going to, like, lose it. <laughs> so if I lose it right now, I'm going to go, ah! For them will I turn to the people a pure language, that they may all call upon the name of the Lord to serve him with one consent. Well, to me, it fits. Anyways, if it doesn't fit for you, I don't care. But that fit in our circumstance, you know, our God will turn to us and you know, he'll give us one language and one. You know. Anyway, I'm not going to interpret it for you. But the person would read it, you know, and they would find it, you know, and they would tell me, and I'd listen to them, and they'd go, wow. You know, and then, then usually they would tell me everything about it because they were so shocked that God spoke to them. And I, and I was like, then they'd go, well, what do I do now? I said, uh, that's between you and God. And I said, you, you, know, you and him got a conversation going. I said, now what you do with it is between, you know, you and him. If you want to go to church, go to church. If you want to talk to him, hey, you got a Bible, take mine. Go. Well, the one person, you know, when they opened up the scripture, the sad part that I want to tell you, the sad part of the story, he said, God did speak to him. They were getting ready to get married. They did this thing, you know, came to me, you know, talked to me, you know, and I shared with them, you know. The guy opened it up, you know, and he read it, and he says, oh, man. He says, you know, Michael, I can't get married right now. i got to go home and talk to my father and my mother. i got to share with them about what's going on in my life and what, you know, Jesus has been doing and what God is doing. You know, and I said, you know, they're, they're, they've been praying for me, and they're, they, they're against this, you know. And I said, they, they, he goes, they're just, you know, I'm just doing this because, you know, it's the right thing to do. And he said, God just told me no. He said, go back to your home. Go back to your folk. Go, you know, hey, sharing the scripture, I'm going, gee, God, you know, it's kind of like, uh, not exactly, you know, interpretation, you know, needed here. It was blunt, in other words. It was right there, do this, you know, or blah, blah, blah. So he did. He says, and then I said, well, I can't tell you what to do. I said, that, you know, you, this is between you and God. You know, I, said, I understand what you're telling me. And I said, I hear you. You know, I said, I can, I can, you know, pray for you. you know, but I said, I can't tell you what to do. You have to make the choice yourself. The next day, he got on the plane back to his parents, and um, fortunately, he shared with them, and apparently they got saved, and he was saved, and they died later, you know, and blah, blah, blah. Unfortunately, the woman that he was getting ready to marry, you know, who had a baby but not his, split the next day. She had done the same thing, reading the Bible, and she threw the Bible back at me and said, I don't want to have nothing to do with your God, and split back east, you know, and I hadn't seen her since. You know, now I find out 10, 20, maybe 30 years, 35 years later, you know, she pops up on the internet and says, I remember you telling me about, you know, gee, uh, did Adam have a neighbor? <laughs> you know, I was like, well, of course he didn't because he was created. But the point is, that it was no big deal. It's like something we did for a missile study. But she remembered that. So I knew that, you know, she had been saved, you know, and that she's, she's with the Lord, but she's just not serving the Lord. So... You know, it's good to know that she was still around. The other guy, you know, he's gone on with the Lord and, you know, whatever. My point is this to you, Millennial. You'll never know that God is real until you prove it to yourself. God will make himself evident to you. He's already demonstrated that through the cross, through Jesus, and through the life of Jesus, and through the Word of God. For us who experience something more than that, 
We know that this comes true. We know that this is a fact because of what we do. We try to prove it to ourselves. Prove me now herewith, Jesus said, or the Bible says in one other place about tithing, which is stupid, but reality check is, I say you can do that with God. I've never known where God says you can't seek him. You can't find him. You can't know him. You know, and there's one place where, you know, the children of Israel, you know, because they died so far away, but, you know, that's a whole different story. Because of Jesus now, we can. And so, for you, please Google it. You know, I mean, for your own sake, not for mine. I don't care whether you say it or not. I mean, you know, frankly, go to hell. You know, I, <laughs> I mean, hey, Google it. Find out what hell is and why it's there. Then you know where you go. You know, if you don't get to heaven. Or go to heaven, you know. Google it. Find out where that is and how to get there. Gospel. Google it. Jesus. Google it. God. Google it. Or, you know, go to the Word, you know. Or go to church. But, millennial, the Gospel is really for you to discover. It's for you to learn to discover who Jesus really is. What Jesus did. And why Jesus wants you not to be a part of those that go to hell and why he's trying to share with you something that you might not know unless you've done it. Unless you really sit down and decide to take the time to just open up your little browser window, you know, it's not that hard, swish it, you know, in your little browser, Google, G-O-O-G-L-E, you know, or thumb it, you know, I got it after that. Oh, Google, ding, you know, oh, Google, okay, now type it. A, B, C, no, not C, D, B, C, D, E, F, C, D, no, G, okay, got it. O, O, G, L, E, you know, and then go there and put in there words you want. You'll know the truth. But I can tell you this, when you do find the truth, the truth will set you free. You'll know one way or the other. You'll be freed up. You may be freed up in the wrong way, but at least you're free. Or you may be freed up in the right way. It will determine for you a pretty easy situation that you don't have to make any more compromise about what you know is true and what you want to do anyways. You'll have the facts. That's the reality. So the only thing I can tell you, Millennial, is just Google it, man. It's not that hard and you already know how to do it. You got a thumb, you can do it. So thumb it, Google it, find it, learn it, do it. You'll know the truth and God will save you. He will. Just call.